Hey everyone, welcome back to SFDC Panther. This is Amit. And in this video, we are going to learn how we can use FLs in MuleSoft. How we can route our request based on the condition that we wanted to put into our application. And how we can also use FLs in our uh, data sense explorer with the help of data view 2.0. So let's quickly start. So let me close my project here. First, I'm going to close this project. I'm going to create a new project for this. Again, uh, for all the tutorials, we are using Nullsoft AnyPoint Studio 7.4. Let's quickly create a project here. And we will say that uh, Panther project. And we'll create a project here and we'll get a new brand canvas where we'll get nothing here so what we are going to do is let's quickly drag and drop our listener into our canvas and then create a http listener configuration for this which will listen in our 8081 port and quickly test the connection if our port is working and it's not being used by other listeners as well so now we have created a listener and for the path let's quickly say that uh, uh, I'm going to give the endpoint as records because uh, in this flow what we are going to do is actually uh, before implementation uh, we are going to pass a parameter in our URL so uh, here in the URL we are going to pass a parameter like uh, uh, object type or uh, some other parameters and then whatever value we will get on that um, attribute or URL params uh, we will check and we will see if the object that we wanted to query from a Salesforce environment we will route those uh, based on our choice event so for that uh, first thing that we need to do is uh, we configured our connector next thing is that let's quickly uh, store uh, use a set variable that uh, set variable is a uh, uh, at, sorry set variable is basically used to store a variable or to create a variable in our mule palette so uh, let me quickly say that here i will name it as object type or i will say that o type here and then what is the name the name is again this is the display name and this is the name of our variable and what will be the value in our variable so we are going to use a function here and uh, to get the query params we know that uh, how to access is if you are not so to access the query parameters first thing that we need to do is message because inside message we will get attributes and payload so we need to go to the attribute and then there we will get query params so here uh, we are going uh, we will be getting query parameters mm, if you are not able to get uh, just quickly type query params and then what uh, what is the parameter that we are sending here so we will say that uh, uh, we are going to send obj type and this is the parameter that we are going to send in our url and let's quickly type cost is as a string and for the default parameter we are going to say that uh, all we are not going to specify any object here or we can put here not specified whatever you want i'm going to put or from my side so now we have set variable attribute we are um, passing a parameter obj type and we are sending that uh, setting into a parameter now let's quickly use uh, salesforce here and we will say inside salesforce what we are going to do is we are going to query a record query an object so first thing that we need to do is let's query uh, put in salesforce here and we will say that uh, query accounts and now again we need to configure a connector for salesforce environment as well so let's quickly configure that basic username password and for the username i'm going to use my org environment username and uh, if you are using anything else uh, you can also use that as well and i'm going to say that and let's quickly try to test the connection if you see that there is an option called security token this is an optional if you are not uh, if you have not added ip address in your environment your current ip address okay it is saying that invalid is username and password so i'm going to say i'm going to use some other uh, uh, other org as well 
and because I I forget the password for that environment. So this security token is an optional. If you are not using uh, IP address in your environment, you have not added. Uh, you need to provide the security token as well. And uh, I have already told you, oh, like in our previous video, we discussed how we can get the security token. And you can see that test connection is successful. We are going to click OK now. In the Salesforce query, uh, we as drag and drop Salesforce query, it requires a query here. So I want to query account. So I'm going to say the select ID name industry from account i'm not going to uh, pass any parameter here for, uh, for now so now there it is gone uh, it will be uh, gone just uh, it is refreshing the metadata so now we have here so before what we need to do is even if you try to execute this application uh, we'll try to run and then execute application what we will be getting so let's quickly try to execute i'm going to run this project first it will ask me to save the project i'm going to save it and then again proceed so once we will be okay uh, why we are getting the error first thing okay and let it be in the meantime we are going to say transform message and then payload here so in the payload what we are going to do is so in the transform message let's quickly change to payload and here uh, we are going to say that json in the payload yeah we are already in payload now let's get back to our console and see uh, what uh, is the status of our application it is still in running so let's wait uh, until our application is up and we can test You can see that the query is blank so we need to again type that query select id name and uh, industry from account so let's quickly copy this now it is refreshing metadata now the error is also gone that means uh, my flow is happy now and if i will save it it will do a hard deploy for me that means uh, i can get the updated data as well Okay, our application is failed. Let's again try to make some changes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a limit here. I'll say that limit to 10 records. And then again, I'll try to save it. This time it will deploy the application and it will run. So as of now in our current flow, if you see that uh, we have not added any choice routers that means we are not checking what is the parameters that we are sending uh, but we are directly querying account here so uh, the main motive of this is uh, i just wanted to tell you like how this will behave so we have got this here so we are going to say that localhost 8081 and the endpoint is that we said records and uh, obj type was the parameter and let's say that here account and hit enter so you can see that uh, still we are able to see accounts here uh, we have uh, got nothing for industry now if i change it to contact what it will give me is a, it is again giving me account here if you see the type uh, attribute of this particular uh, response that we are getting again we are getting type here as well so what what actually it is doing here is we have not added any choice routers and it is just only assigning the variables to the the variable o, o, t, o type whatever we have given and uh, then it is going querying our account here so now what we need to do is we need to uh, put a query here and then sorry we need to put a choice router here so for that you can see in our favor, uh, favorite is section you will get a choice so let's quickly drop this uh, now you have we have got choice so we need to drag and the uh, drag and drop this inside uh, when so we have got this win but if you see that this is not happy i'm getting an error here a red sign as well why i'm getting error because i need to define when this particular uh, flow needs to be executed so for this let's quickly use a function and we already have a variable called o type 
that means object type and we need to use that variable here so we will say that to access the variables we have options where dot and if you use dot you will get uh, all the variables that are available automatically and I'm going to use here account if object type that I'm sending in the URL in a query parameter is account then only execute this now it is happy and then we have default and if you want to query more like uh, in case of Salesforce uh, you can send some other objects like uh, contacts so if you see how you will uh, be able to add more conditions here so you just need to drag and then drag here and you will see that once you will see this black line horizontal line you just need to drop there and you will get another condition here now first thing let's quickly add a parameters sorry add a condition here so i'm going to say that vice dot ot uh, o type equal to equal to contact and i'm going to also change the variable and display name so i'm going to get a list of contacts that's why i'm using square brackets and again i'm going to select select id name email phone fax from contact limit limit hand um, limit handed and uh, again we need to transform this to get the output so let's go to our favorites section use transform message and then use set payload in the transform message what we need to do is uh, again let's quickly use the payload and instead of java let's use json now if you go to console and we'll try to save this application it will do a hard deploy for us and, uh, and then based on this hard deploy what we will do is we can execute our flow and then based on our flow let's see what output we are actually getting so for this default uh, let's quickly add for now uh, set payload here and for the set payload here we will say that uh, object not specified object not found you can say object not found and uh, we are going to use we are going to wrap this inside double quotes and we will use concatenating with uh, plus plus and we will say that vs dot ot type o type here now let's quickly save this so if the objects that we are sending in our query parameter will not match either account or contact we will get the payload as a default here and if it will match we will get the query uh, we will get the response according to the query that we are making to salesforce now our application is running so now let's try to send it because we are already passing contact you can see that this time we are getting value for contact and we are getting value in each fields that whatever uh, we have querying here and we are getting the number of records that uh, we do have in our environment now let's quickly uh, say that here instead of contact make the request to account we are getting accounts and for the industry we are also getting a value in a single contact sorry single account and for the others we have none now let's say uh, i'm going to use opportunities so if you'll send this you can see object not found opportunity uh, there is no space between this uh, the reason is that in our set payload uh, what we did is uh, we did not uh, put up a space after found so this is how you can use choice router in your uh, flow now let's quickly talk about uh, in our account we had like if you wanted to use f else in our uh, payload how we can use that so in our previous lecture sorry in our previous videos we have worked on how we can uh, use map map function here so we are going to use map here and uh, we will say that account record and we are going to use dollar sign here so for this we are going to get uh, the exact account all whatever fields we are getting from salesforce and now if you wanted to uh, get the industry so let's say that uh, industry i wanted to get so i'll say that i'll use dollar dot industry if equal to equal to null i'm going to say that uh, education and else i'm going to say else it is going to use dollar dot industry 
so now what output we will be getting here is uh, so we will be seeing that if industry is null and then it will return education to us else it is going to return whatever industry we are getting so another huge case for this fls is uh, let's suppose that you are migrating some data from salesforce sorry from uh, some database to salesforce and now you are getting lookup values you are like you are migrating contacts and you have their accounts related accounts under which those contacts are going to create uh, for some contacts the account id is blank or uh, for some contacts it's not a valid id so how you you are going to maintain that because those contacts or the complete batch is going to fail in that case you can use fls and you can check if uh, it is starting from 0, uh, 1, uh, 0, 0, 0, 1 then only process that else uh, put a blank for that particular account so this is a very basic huge case even if you will be working in a uh, live environment or live project you will definitely be getting more use case where you can use conditional format uh, conditional routing or FLC statement so now we have saved this uh, we are waiting for our uh, project to be up and so that we can test so now first thing we are testing opportunities we have got that there is any space now now let's quickly test for uh, account here because we are talking about industry and see what we are getting here so if we go to the source now we have account uh, for industry here we are we are getting null but for he uh, but here we are getting education for all the industries we are getting education here uh, but uh, the parameters that we are getting here is that is null so this is how you can quickly use fls and uh, now even if in case of default uh, you if you wanted to call some other like uh, for default if you wanted to make sure uh, you are calling some or uh, you are getting opportunities so let's quickly query sorry uh, we need to put that after payload here so for query here instead of opportunity let's query leads here leads so we are going to say select id name email company from lead and again we are going to put a limit of 100 here and uh, we also need to transform this into the json so that we can get the output and set payload to display the information now if we save this application it will again do a hard deploy for us and uh, and why we are not stopping our application because if we will stop it will take time to start our application again that's why we are just doing uh, making the changes and it is deploying right away now let's quickly uh, say we are uh, getting your opportunities and we are trying to send it what data we are going to get we are getting invalid request data we are getting an error that means we have some error if you go to your mule studio you will get some error so where you will get select id name email company from lead that means there is a some okay we have uh, put wrong we did not typed limit completely so once now if we save it and after deploying our application we will test we will be getting the leads lead records okay so let's quickly test it you can see we are getting 200 and uh, we are getting the data of the lead whatever we are looking for So this is it for this uh, for this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to uh, put down into the comment section, and I will be definitely help you. Thank you.